These are the 10 decks you need to know how to beat for NAWCQ. Hello everyone, this is Tombox, and today we are breaking down the top 10 most expected decks at NAWCQ. Now, it won't be uncommon to run into some of these matchups, but why are they so popular? Who made them so popular, and what are we looking out for? Well, we got a bit of event data to back that up, so you don't have to worry about that. And hopefully, this video will give you the foresight to know which matchup you should be practicing against. Who knows, you might even win your invite to Worlds in Japan. Starting with number one, we have Cash Tier. Of course, Cash Tier was going to be here, so we're just going to knock this one out as our first pick here because it's the most represented deck among almost every single event around the world, and it has most of the top cut representation as well. So that's why Cash Tier is definitely up here. It's a very strong deck, even though the ban list limited the Arise Heart down to one, you still have the one Arise Heart, and people are protecting that Arise Heart castle like no tomorrow. So. Yeah, killing the Arise Heart is going to be a little bit more difficult. And while Arise Heart's on the field, everyone has to play suboptimally. They have to play Banish Line. You're playing under a Macro Cosmos. Not the easiest thing. And because of that, it's definitely one of the strongest contenders. And it also is the one that dictates how people get to play their main deck. On top of that, the main deck monsters are no slouch either. Each of them is capable of regenerating resources. And not to mention that Birth is well at three and it's one of the best recursion cards in the entire game considering that one monster can fully regenerate a full board so those are two things going for them and on top of that they have the rank seven engine going with them as well so they can break down cards they can pop cards they can steal your monsters they have basically all of the best toolkits in Yu-Gi-Oh! so that's why they are there but they are also a fragile deck defensively they don't have a lot of protection unless they manage to attach a ton of stuff under that arise heart now in terms of recent tops or recent wins we have south american wcq santiago marine who featured his deck on youtube otherwise i wouldn't have this data so yeah he was the recent uh winner at wcq south america so he's got his uh world's invite so well I guess, well, best of luck to him there. Let's move on to the next deck. Deck number two is Labyrinth. This is the deck that won German Nationals, thanks to Dinka Boy. And, of course, with the iconic scene of him activating the Eradicator Virus, taking out five cards of Tom Gay's hand. He did every other Labyrinth play right to get him to that point where he got to showcase that play. So, in other words, that deck is still very strong. And if you're a very skilled pilot, it's definitely one of the most threatening options. It almost feels like... What's another deck where if you let it snowball, like Sky Striker, if you let Sky Striker get an extra turn, they might just get everything back because that's what the deck is capable of. You know, Labyrinth with Furniture is no different. They're able to just cycle a lot of stuff and outgrind grind you. So that's one of their biggest strengths. One of the key things you probably want to be aware of for this deck is that you want, probably want to prevent them from getting free cards out of the deck thanks to Lady, right? If, La if they activate Trap Card and you have some blank activation, you should probably use that blank activation to kind of block the lady from getting an additional card onto the field. It could be a D barrier. It could be one of the viruses. These are things that you definitely don't want them to fetch out of the deck straight up. So these are things to be aware of. And yeah, so this is a, the trap deck that you need to be aware of. So if within your side deck, you should prepare several cards just to deal with this particular matchup. Hopefully something that's chainable. Deck number three, Runic Sprites. Now, this one has two particular builds here that we're talking about. There's going to be Live Twin build, and there's also a For Hire build. There's two people that are influencing this. One being the great Joshua Schmidt, who I believe in German Nationals uh, finished top 16. And then there's also the Central America WCQ winner, Carlos Mercados, went 16 and 0, basically undefeated through the entire event to get to his point and that is uh, no easy feat now carlos played the live twin build whereas joshua smith played the uh, for higher build so definitely two different you know approaches to the deck live twin build if you guys don't know they have a lot more gas in terms of you know controlling your board through the live twin engine using them to pop stuff getting additional draws as well as backing it up with the runic cards in hand with the field spell up as for the for higher build you can use the for higher monster to help gain card advantage to drawing three cards during opponent's turn once they destroy one of your cards while full goal is on the field so that is one of the scarier parts of the deck and the deck requires very little to set up and once you pair it with the sprite engine most of the sprite cards are just free interaction free searches and free advantage that can provide you with additional spells provide you additional bodies and negations on the field so that's what makes them so strong so how do you actually beat them well to beat sprites in general you just want to 
probably just want to kaiju some of their stuff off. You probably want to take out that field spell so that you have less cards to interact with and hopefully you can use that to snowball your advantage. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it is a good idea to eat their cards one for one on any of these trades because they will out resource you. They have the draw engine from the runic side. Deck number four, we have Branded. This is Branded Despia. And I want to say congratulations and welcome back, Andres Torres. You on an event back, you've already hit top 32. That's like no easy feat, especially with taking such a long break after all. But, you know, hitting top 32, you mentioned about duality. And duality is one of the newer techs coming from Monstrous Revenge. And, you know, usually set after set, Brandon gets something new, something better. And it usually maintains the weakness of Ash. But this is not the case. This one lets you circumvent the Ash weakness by dropping a Dragoon onto the field first if you start with a Grand Guino. If you start with a Grand Guino, then you can do that, activate duality. And you also provide yourself with an additional draw by shuffling back a light and dark. So definitely more grindy and you know better protection so ash might not be enough to just stop the deck on top of that they also have sanctifier dragon i've seen some people play uh into like a really weird line where they just start things off with a sanctifier dragon and then they set like a couple of cards those couple of cards include fusion duplication which copies branded fusion allowing you to activate basically branded fusion during your opponent's turn and can help you set up that entire lock I'm talking about the gimmick puppet lock, which is so these are some things that you need to be aware of. You gotta find ways to clear it. That's why bestials are getting more and more popular. You gotta take out the problem, man. And number five, we have Dragon Link featuring the Bistios. Not only are they performing Link summons, they're also doing a lot of Synchro 10 summons, which gives them access to the Bistio Dispater, Baron, Baron, and Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel changes the game a little bit for this deck because remember, once Chaos Angel hits the field, if they use a light in the dark, a lot of the Synchro monsters, they're unaffected by monster effects, but more importantly, a lot of the main deck monsters, every single monster on their side of the field cannot be destroyed by battle. That particular limitation is the battle phase, you know, crippler, because some people forget that, oh, these monsters, they can't be destroyed by battle. I thought I could kill the Chaos Angel. Yeah, don't do that. And one common illegal play that does occur from time to time is like, say you've banished the opponent's Lubellion, the Bestial Lubellion, and they activate Dispater to revive it. They can't do that because the limitation on the Lubellion. But what makes this deck so strong? Well, first of all, it's a Dragon Link deck. The amount of gas the deck has from simply from just activating a single card of Quick Launch or a normal summon of Safer, it goes a long way and it can quite easily OTK you. And on top of that, now they have additional single plays to kind of help them extend and manage their resources as well. So don't underestimate the deck. It has a lot of damage output and even can survive under the smallest boards thanks to Heretic Seal and maybe one simple back row. And with Branded Regain plus Beast, the deck can outgrind you quite easily. Okay, we're halfway through, but I have to throw a shout out to, of course, mstmerch.com. If you guys want to get some awesome sleeves, the Ulti Egos, the Ulti Instincts, they're fantastic sleeves. Or if you want some tournament level sleeves, such as our Carbon Series Whites, you know, the White V2s, or the Carbon Series Black, the Onyx Black, they are really, really awesome with some of the smoothest shuffle feel that feels like, you know, classic old school PC Whites. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is really, really good. So hopefully you guys want to check that out. If you guys want to also pick up, you know, a surprise mat here or there, or you need to sort your collection, we've got dividers, we've got mats, and we also got oversleeves to help you protect your foil sleeves. So check it out at mstmerch.com. And of course, the summer sale is still going on. So make sure you guys get the stuff while things are still on sale. Man, it's crazy. So I still can't believe we're putting things on sale. I, I, you know what? It is what it is. It's on sale. Now, these next five decks, they are going to take you out for dinner. Sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, they're not going to take you out for dinner. They're just going to take you out of the tournament, especially if you don't know what they do. So I do recommend you guys to at least have a couple of test matches against these decks and be aware of what they are capable of because they're definitely a little bit more under the radar. Number six, we have Firewall Cybers Math Mech. To keep it short, they still have the access code OTK available. They're trying to end their board with gaining advantage and they play a ton of hand traps against you because this is, again, a one card combo deck. Even though the circular got limited to one, Firewall Defensor can also replace that. And when you combine that with Cyanet Mining, they have quite a bit of consistency, almost like a 20% chance. Uh, on the first hand that they're going to have a one card combo but if they don't have one card combo they might have a two card combo which is even worse for you and in terms of the end board they're going with you know the terra hurts or they're going with the heat soul to gain additional card advantage and once they pair that with the super factorial which they can still do they can still do like the 
like the generic package line which they have them revive like a nabla out of the graveyard and then still do the triple factorial play yeah don't underestimate that they're gonna access code otku they have also terahertz sending monsters like a disave worm so disave worm can function as a spell trap negation and then they have used uh the muriel logic aggregator to negate monsters terahertz sending stuff out of the extra deck is a very powerful effect and not to be underestimated so that's what they have going for them i recommend hitting them with stuff like kaijus maybe lava golems if they end with like a double monster play there are things that you can definitely do but just also be aware of the hand traps because that's why they're drawing so many cards with heat soul deck number seven we have rika sun avalon undoubtedly you're going to be running into this deck at some point and this is a deck that if you do not know what they do you're going to have a very difficult time this deck got top four at uk national uh, WCQ by Jessica Robinson, aka Sunseed Jess. And I do recommend you guys to all check out Sunseed Jess's channel. There's a video on there that teaches all the combo line. I don't want to explain all the combo line, but essentially it is a one card combo deck with great board breaking skills, great synergy with all the different plants and able to fetch out so many different cards and plays pretty well into hand traps as well. And there's many different ways to extend. There's negations that come out of the graveyard, come out of the hand. There's a, a tribute based uh, field spell, much like Lair of Darkness, Con Con, which provides them with, you know, a set spell card, as well as that tribute off of your card. It's not the easiest matchup to play against, and the timing is a little bit tricky for most average Yu-Gi-Oh players. So, you know, this deck definitely has a lot of the makings of a champion's deck, you know, one card combo, board breaking, everything definitely one of the ones that are definitely a lot more under the radar check out the how to beat video if you want to see a more in-depth guide on how to beat rika sun avalon number eight we have vanquish souls this deck has been taking top spots at a lot of the events i don't think they've won a major major event like a wcq level event like a tier three event just yet however they have taken a lot of top spots even in top eight in germany and even in our recent regionals milano of course got second place and at nationals in germany i believe servant kz also got top eight with vanquish soul so this is not a deck to underestimate one of the things that you have to note about them their timing a lot of their stuff happened in the main phase and if you can do a lot of stuff to disrupt them in the main phase uh before the main phase sorry uh, much like fluanderies then you'll have a pretty good time against them but note that they will probably beat you in most of the timings in terms of one for one trade in perms and target based uh, disruption they usually do not work uh, unless the other player is not very patient uh, normally it's going to be very difficult to land some of those particular cards um if you're able to kaiju them break them apart or you can just watch a video on how to beat vanquish souls yeah check out that video it's just a lot easier for than me to explain because that explains the entire deck and uh who made them popular milano servit kz these are all some of the best ones here uh, milano got second place at the toronto regionals and i would believe that uh servit got the top eight at German nationals. No easy feat. That's like, that's literally like a YCS level event. Number nine, we have Gold Pride. This is a deck that I featured, and there's actually three builds right now. There is the Pure Gold Pride, there's the Punk Gold Pride, and there is the Evil Eye Gold Pride, which is a bit newer. The Punk Gold Pride, I think everyone knows if you somehow end up getting into Psychic End Punisher, which is one of their key boss monsters, by the way, Psychic End Punisher they're going to have a really good time if they get the damage far enough there's a point where you there you just can't win because you can't deal the damage you can't take the damage you can't afford it uh then that's the point where you have to scoop the cards there's just no way that you're gonna beat them at this point because every single time they're going to actively suck again punish or banish one of your cards and then attack over another one so they're trading two monsters for your every single one and it's gaining attack points every you know step of the way it's not the easiest monster to answer unless you of course you have mirror jade but i'll talk about that in a second but even if when you swing in with mirror jade and you're going to take lethal damage then you've kind of crossed the point of no return so don't waste anyone's time just scoop it up basically if you have no out uh then there's the evil eye build i'm not so familiar with this one so i would recommend checking out you know squiddy's channel more on the evil eye build but these are all very very solid options and uh, yeah, don't underestimate a gold pride player because Psychic and Punisher is going to punish you. The roller baller and the pin baller can just wipe your board. Not the easiest thing to play around. And uh, once they open up the board, Psychic and Punisher can really just you know go in and steal the W. 
And finally, number 10, we have Exorcist, made popular thanks to Steven Santoni's win with the remote YCS, the most recent and probably the last YCS event of the season. Okay, and winning with Exo Sister, no easy feat. Cash tier is all over the place, but this deck isn't as affected by cash tier as most other decks. Like it can run D Shifter as well, so it's not affected by the D Shifter or the Banishing. So it really just have to play dealing with most of the existing monsters in the main deck, as well as the Arise Heart banishing the stuff face down. Okay, well that's fair, but. One of the key things here, I would say, with an Exo Sister is that a lot of people are playing base deals as a you know hand trap of choice, and simply by putting an Exo Sister on the field, you've caused this whole trigger baggage where every single base deal activation would probably trigger an Exo Sister going into the extra deck. So it's not the easiest thing, but you also have branded players, you know, removing stuff from the grave by putting stuff back into the deck again, which will automatically cause a little bit of a triggering issue. So. Definitely a really, really solid choice. And I believe a lot of the other decks as well, they remove stuff out of the graveyard. It's not the easiest thing to play around, which does give them advantage, even with some of the weak, you know, main deck monsters. So yeah, definitely don't be surprised if we see some extra sister, especially anyone that has watched his deck profile on Hakuna Madeira's uh, video, uh, just to be aware that, you know, stuff like that exists. And these are the 10 decks you need to be aware of for NAWCQ. Now, I wish I had the EU WCQ data so I can put that in here because we know that the winner's deck in EU probably is going to have a popular following as well. And that's probably going to alter like some of the representation at the event, whether it be you know the starting point or the end point, whatever it may be. And if I missed your deck, you can leave it down in the comment section or don't because are you sure you want people to counter your deck ahead of time? Yeah, think about it. Right. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this content. I will see you all at WCQ. And uh, well, if you guys see me, say hi. I'll sign your stuff. I will be dressed up pretty nicely. Let's just say that. All right. And that's it. Don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.